Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will speak about the asset class trend following. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for watching this video. My name is Radvan Vojtko and I'm CEO of Quantpedia.com. Um, I would like to use this uh, series, uh, Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies, to explain uh, more advanced co um, concepts of trading strategies but before we get there uh, we need to start with the basics so uh, for today i would like to uh, explain you the reasoning uh, and functioning of uh, one of the most basic strategies uh, which is asset class uh, trend following uh, i will show you how does it work why it work and uh, we will maybe touch a little uh, how we can improve uh, this strategy. So, what does asset class trend following means? The asset class trend following is a simple strategy that tries to explain the momentum anomaly uh, as a market timing rule. Uh, but the perk is that the strategy does it uh, with the various assets. What does it mean? So, we are the strategy is based on various moving averages momentum filters, and we are trying to gain exposure. To an asset class only at the time when there is a higher probability than just holding uh, the underlying asset. So we are trying to hold the market uh, and to have a lower volatility and lower drawdown uh, by selectively holding the market only during the uh, during the good times or two. Uh, now. Uh, the asset class trend following means that we are not doing it just on one asset class but we are doing it on uh, multiple asset classes simultaneously so we are uh, receiving the profit also from the diversification so we diversify in between multiple assets um, there are a lot of papers that are uh, working with these asset class trend following strategies they are sometimes called global tactical asset allocation strategies uh, I would like to show you probably the most uh, or the, we the well-known paper from Maven Faber, uh, which is called the Quantitative Approach to Tactical Asset Allocation. Uh, this paper is uh, freely available on uh, SSRN, uh, uh, and uh, I can open it. I, I will open it for you, and I will show you a few, a few charts, and I will explain uh, how does uh, how does the strategy work. Out. So, uh, uh, the Maybe Faber is stating that the best or the, the, it's, a, it's a good way uh, for a strategy if we are diversified in between multiple assets. Uh, he's using the five, uh, I would say, the most known assets, which is US large cap stocks, uh, foreign developed stocks, uh, 10, uh, 10 year government bonds, uh, commodities, and real estate. Uh, because and we can take a look on the chart because those assets are not correlated uh, to, or they are they are not strongly correlated to each other. Uh, we can gain um, better performance by diversifying our system or our rule between multiple multiple assets. And now the question is, what is what is the rule? So as as it was said, uh, we are trying to uh, profit from the market from each individual market during the time when uh, it's profitable for us so, uh, when there is a lower risk uh, of the drawdown and higher risk of the return because we can see that the maximal drawdown for all of the assets it's uh, i don't know over the 50 percent uh, i'm not talking about the u.s uh, government bonds but uh, also the u.s government bonds are not without without the risk so we can uh, surely improve uh, our strategy by not holding the asset during this uh, big uh, big drawdowns and how we can do it so how we can manage our risk uh, so the most easiest way is to use the trend following rule in in this case uh, it's a 10 month simple moving average so it means uh, we calculate the 10 month moving average uh, on each asset and we hold the asset only when we are uh, over the top uh, over the 10 month moving uh, simple moving average uh, why does it uh, why so here is the here is the rule uh, why why we do it uh, so we can take a look on the example. So if we 
uh, compare the total return of S&P 500 uh, during the last I don't know, 110 years uh, versus the market timing return. Uh, so that's a return from the strategy that's uh, holding the S&P 500 only when we are in the uptrend. So over the 10, uh, 10 month moving average, uh, we can see that uh, our Schreiber ratio is much higher. Our volatility is much lower. Uh, our maximum drawdown is much lower. So, uh, and the number, the percentage of the positive months uh, is significantly higher. So we are like, uh, we, we are trying to avoid the negative months on the S&P 500. And we can use this, um, this um, model, uh, not just on S&P 500, but on all of the five asset classes and diversify them among them. So that's like the, uh, the easiest one of the, um, or the basic, uh, asset class trend following strategy. So diversification plus trend trend protection. Now, the question is why why the uh, timing or why the moving average works? Uh, the reason for that uh, is uh, mainly the volatility clustering. What does the volatility clustering mean? So the risk uh, in uh, most of the markets is not distributed randomly. So it means when there is a period of higher risk, uh, there is a higher probability. So when we have a high risk month, there is a high probability that the next month will be also the higher risk uh, and not the lower risk. So it means uh, when there is a stress on the market, uh, usually the next month is also the stressful. So if we use a trend following rule and we try to avoid so to remove ourselves out of the market uh, during this, those uh, stressful times, uh, we um, maybe lose some part of the performance, but we are uh, removing those negative months out of the, our performance. Uh, and it means that the, the resultant geometric return uh, is much higher. Uh, that's basically what is also uh, mentioned in uh, Maybe Paper's paper. So uh, the volatility clustering is one of the reasons uh, why uh, why uh, the strategy is working. Uh, we can uh, so here is a here is a table. Let me get to the table. Uh, here we can see that this volatility clustering effect is uh, present in all of the asset classes. So uh, in U.S. stocks, in the foreign stocks. So if you are in a, a market when, or if you hold foreign foreign stocks when we are under the 10-month moving average, uh, our return is higher, our volatility is lower compared to when we are holding the market uh, during the time when the uh, price is under the 10-month moving average. Uh, something similar is happening for the commodities, for the real estate, for the rest of it. Yeah. No. So, um, now, using the moving average is like very, very simple way of how to uh, follow the trend. Of course, that's not the only way how we can follow the trend. Uh, we can use more sophisticated uh, calculations. So we can use Kalman filter or we can use hidden market, uh, hidden market model where we are trying to assess uh, or we are trying to assess uh, well, what is the best or what is the uh, state of the recessionary or what is the recessionary state. What is, the, what is the expansionary state uh, or we can even um, um, we can even work with not just one state but with multiple states so with trending state uh, non-trading state uh, bull market state bear market state etc etc uh, we can also use the machine learning uh, to pick the correct combination of the risky asset it can be the commodities, foreign, uh, the commodities, uh, the real estate, the U.S. the U.S. stocks, uh, emerging markets or um, developed market stocks, uh, foreign stocks, um, U.S. government bonds, etc., etc. So there are. So the moving average is not the only way how we can um, how we can uh, decide if we are in an uptrend or if we are in a downtrend. Uh, but it's the simplest simplest one. Uh, and it, it does the, the good job. So it means that the resultant performance of the simple of the strategy with a simple asset class trend following 
uh, with the diversification among the global assets uh, and with using the simple transforming rule in the form of moving average is good enough, but yeah, of course we can improve on that. Uh, on that. So um, that's all for today. Uh, the next time I will cover the cross-sectional momentum rules and then we will move to other topics. Interested? Then pick another video to learn more or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.